Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I've got your test um, made. It's all right here. So I'll, when we're done tonight, I will um, I'll post it up for you. All right. Hello. 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 I think I'm going to make it do Friday night at midnight. Oh, dang. Oh, so it's today and tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to be some kind of realistic uh, thing here. So tonight we are going to get into some stuff that is going to be very important for us in the future. All right, so let me share my screen here. And uh, okay, one note. Let's see. This is what we were talking about Fibonacci stuff. So, this is our Math 30 stuff today. So, they're even looking at this stuff too. And Put text mode up there. That's why I have record 185 ratio and root test. Okay. I was watching live baseball game and I went into a rain delay. Yankees and, and Nationals. I definitely want to watch some of the Dodgers tonight. Okay, so here we go. All right. Now, while we're on the subject of my Math 30, I'm going to give you guys a challenge, all right? This is a problem that I put on there. That I put on their test, okay? So solve this system. So at your own leisure over the weekend and see what you can come up with. And then X, Y plus Y squared equals three. I'm real curious to see how my, uh, how my uh, math 30 guys who actually try this and don't hand it off to a guy like me to solve it, how they do. So for, this is just a straight old algebra problem. Okay, so we are still in this 11.6 section. And we had this absolute versus conditional convergence. And hold on a second. Okay, so we defined what it meant to be absolutely convergent. So let's let this a n be any sequence. Doesn't have to be all positives. It doesn't have to satisfy, uh, you know, alternate back and forth. It could just just be any old thing. Okay, so. The definition was the series a n is absolutely convergent if the sum of the absolute values of all these guys is convergent. And if this thing converges, but when I take away any possible negatives, this thing then diverges. And if you think about our example of this, this is the alternating harmonic series, then we say um, the series A n is conditionally convergent. 
Okay, now the conditionally convergent ones, these are the guys that behave kind of weird. As I showed you yesterday, I could rearrange the way I write down the sum for the natural log of two and get it to add up to something else, okay? So um, anyways, when we just have like a general question about a series, like let's say for example, for this series, the sum n equaling 26 to infinity of n factorial divided by n to the n. Okay, bounding this thing might be a little bit challenging. Um, I don't think we can use the integral test because we don't have a factorial thing. So we need new tests. Okay, so here is our result number one. This is the one you use probably nine times out of 10. Okay, and we call it the ratio test. Okay, so given the series, infinitely long, A n, we have the following result. Number one, if the limit as n tends to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one over a sub n is equal to L, and if that's less than one, then this thing, a n, the series is absolutely convergent. Number two, if the limit as n tends to infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n is equal to L, and that's bigger than one, then this guy, a n, diverges. And number three, if the limit as n tends to infinity of the magnitude of a n plus one over a n equals one, we can draw no conclusion. Okay, now I want to point something out here. The last result that we had about a limit said something about as long as the limit is, is uh, a positive number, right? That's all we had to care about. Then some magic happens. Okay, now we have to pay attention to bigger than one versus less than one. And I'm telling you, if you don't stay on top of this stuff, it it's, doesn't go well, okay? So after you finish these 10 questions this weekend, I'm, there's baseball on. I mean, it's happening, okay? Do, do what I say. Find, help. Find two baseball games tomorrow, you know, if you can, all right? All right, now as for the proof of this, I really think it's instructive if you guys somehow figure out a way to just try to follow this. You don't have to write it down. Um, maybe after I'm done with it, I'll scroll back, you know, and you can like take pictures of it. But especially like Eduardo, who's a math major, let's, let's see if we can, if you can follow me. All right, you with me? Eduardo, you there? No, said he was there. All right, so here we go. He was here earlier. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully he can follow this. Okay, so we're going to suppose that the limit is n tends to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is equal to L 
and L is strictly less than one. Okay, so here's zero. Now we know this limit can't be negative because it's the limit of a bunch of, it's a bunch of, a bunch of positive things. Here's one. Okay, so we're assuming that this limit is somewhere less than one. Could be there, could be anywhere else. Okay. Now, by the by the common sense theorem, there exists a number r in between L and one. Would we agree with that? The common sense theorem that if L and one are not the same number, then, why do I keep doing that? There's a number R that is sandwiched in between L and one. So this might be the R, okay? Okay, now let me draw this up again here, okay? So here's zero, here's the R, Here's the L, okay? Now we're gonna use the idea that the limit as N tends to infinity of A N plus one over A N equals L, okay? Then these numbers which are all positives are going to be coming in in a sequence on the number line like this because the limit is l at some point in time all of these values have to start piling up towards l okay so because of this there exists an integer n bigger than zero such that if n is bigger than or equal to this n, a n plus one over a n is going to be smaller than r. Okay, so because the limit is going that direction, it's eventually going to be smaller than r. I got to open the door. I'm going to talk All right. So eventually the these numbers a n plus one over a n will be smaller than r. Okay. So if you unravel this, this means that if n is bigger than or equal to n, a n plus one is going to be less than r times a n. Okay. So a capital N plus one is going to be smaller than R times A sub N. Okay. Now, if we repeat this process, A N plus two is going to be less than r times the previous guy. But this was smaller than r, r, a, n, which is going to be r squared times a, n. 
when I look at the next term, because this little number down here, capital N plus two is bigger than N, bigger than equal to the N, this is going to be less than R times the A N plus one. But the R times the A N plus one, that is the R less than R squared. So another R goes in there and it's going to be an R cubed times A sub N. And you see the pattern emerging. A N plus three is going to be less than, oops, going to be less than R to the fourth times A N. Okay. And this keeps going. And so in general, um, the absolute value a n plus k is less than a sub capital N r to the k. It's a lot to write down. I'll let you guys catch up if you are writing it down, even though I didn't really want you to. Okay, so what's happening here is I'm getting a new kind of a thing. So if I was to look at the sum from k equaling um, zero to infinity, of a um, capital N plus K, okay, plus K, okay, then each one of these guys is less than or equal to this guy, K equaling zero to infinity of a sub n times r to the k. Okay, now that a n is just a number and the r is a number that's between negative one and one. So what we get k equaling zero to infinity of r to the k. And this converges since it's geometric. Okay. So um, we don't even need to know one over one minus r. We just need to know that what adds up to something. Okay. So what we have seen here, so the series uh, stop. Is that for me or someone else? A sub n plus k converges. Okay. Now the sum that we were really interested in was the whole sum, which was the um, A sub N type stuff. Okay, well, what it is, it's A zero plus A one, oops, I put all those guys, plus dot, 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 plus A sub capital N minus one. Then it's plus the sum K equaling zero to infinity of this thing. 
Okay. Now this is just a finite list. And we know that this converges. So this converges, i.e. this thing is absolutely convergent. All right. So the whole trick up here was this. And if Eduardo's watching this later on YouTube or whatever you guys are doing with these lectures, putting them on Pornhub, that'd be pretty funny, huh? Um, so the, the trick here is to try to get something, the series behind something you know to converge. Okay, and behind the thing that's converging is this geometric series. So this is our work up here, starting from right here and going down here, getting this thing bounded. Okay, now for part two, let's just do this faster, okay? The limit is n tends to infinity of a n plus one over a n equals an L and now that's bigger than one. Okay, so again, on a number line, if here's one, let's say L is right here. Okay, well, I can find a number R that's in between L and one. Maybe I should get rid of the, oh, fuck. Here's one. Let's say there's L, okay? All right, and again, so there exists an N such that N bigger than or equal to N is gonna imply that eventually this thing, since it's going to L, is eventually going to be bigger than the R. And so we get this idea. A n plus one is now going to be larger than the A sub n times the R. Okay. We do the same exact steps only with the inequality sign reversed. And we say that, okay, after we go through that whole rigmarole, we say the sum k equaling zero to infinity of a sub capital N plus k is going to be bigger than the sum k equaling zero to infinity of a sub capital N times R to the K. And this guy diverges since R is bigger than one. So that means that this series is ahead of a diverging series. So therefore it has no choice but to diverge. So since that guy adds up to infinity, that would imply then that the initial entire series itself adds up to infinity. And so this thing diverges. Okay. Okay, now if you've been following along here, the problem with the third one, with the L equaling one, is that this is L and it's also one. There's nowhere to put the R between the two. 
in the in the one case the r was ahead of the l and behind the one and in the other case you know it was ahead of the one and behind the l is that what i just said ahead of the l which had been bigger than one well whatever the hell i meant okay all right so when this kind of thing happens then what you have to do is pick another test Okay, so let's start off with the, that example that I had written up there. N equaling 42 to infinity of N factorial over N to the N. Okay, so we identify what our AN is. It's gonna be this N factorial over N to the N. And if I look at a n plus one over a n, that's going to be n plus one factorial divided by n plus one raised to the n plus one times n to the n and then the n factorial. Okay, now when we're using these ratio, this ratio test, we always get a lot of stuff canceling. Okay, so first of all, the, the top is going to turn into n plus 1, n to the n, divided by n plus 1 to the n plus 1, because n plus 1 factorial kind of cancels with that, just leaving that piece. And since I don't really need absolute values anymore because everything is positive, this is gonna be n plus one, n to the n. Okay, now downstairs, I'm gonna write n plus one to the first power times n plus one to the n which leaves me with n to the n over n plus one to the n. Okay, so now we need to figure out what the limit is as n tends to infinity of n to the n divided by n plus one to the n. What do you guys think? In there, it's one. Sorry, because it's end of the end cross out over end of the end on the top and end of the end on the bottom, so it's one. Okay, we got one contender of one being the answer. Notice that it's infinity over infinity, right? You see that? So would that just be like either infinity or zero? Well, what it is, remember, we can use all of our rules. Okay. Infinity over infinity. You might want to consider L'Hopital or something, but the fact that we don't really want to start taking the derivative of x to the x. Okay, so this is the downside of a short summer. We would have twice as much time to see this. Okay, so this is n over n plus 1 raised to the nth power. That's the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 over n raised to the nth. Why the hell would you do that? Why in the wide world of sports would you do that? N goes to infinity of one over one plus one over N raised to the N. Now I have twice said, pointed this out. This limit is going to be important. You might as well commit it to memory. Anybody remember what it is?
1 plus 1 over n to the n. It's not the pi squared over 6 one, is it? No. It's e. That's what this limit is. Got to remember this one, guys, OK? And since e is bigger than 1, that's less than 1. So by the ratio test, the sum of the n factorial over n to the n converges. OK. All right. So what my big plan here is, is just going to pick out a lot of problems and see what we can come up with. OK, so let's try this example here. How's about we look at um, the turn storage, the sum of n divided by 2 to the n. Okay. This guy we can use the ratio test on. And as a matter of fact, we could also use the next test that we'll come up with. OK, so you identify our a n. And it's going to be n over 2 to the n. And then a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, that's equal to n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n plus 1, 2 to the n over n, which is going to be n plus 1 divided by 2n. OK. What's the limit as n tends to infinity of this thing? It's the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 over 2n. And by L'Hopital or polynomial over polynomial, the answer is one half. OK. OK, um, let's try another guy here. Um, to make sure I'm doing the right ones there. OK. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So if, you, if you open up your book, you're going to start and look at the exercises. You're going to start seeing some guys that look like this. The sum n equaling 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And then it's 2 to the n times n factorial divided by 5 times 8 times 11. And then the pattern here for the numbers is 3n plus 2. Now, over the years, I've been able to find similarities in schemes. This is a problem that many of you would probably just ignore, right? Because it looks kind of stupid. You know, this is just some random problem that somebody came up with to keep you busy. Well, remember, I've already kind of given you a uh, uh, kind of a preview that we're going to try to find infinitely long polynomials 
that are going to approximate our polynomial, our non-polynomial. And sometimes the coefficients, like you'll see when we do the square root and the cube root, the coefficients start looking all funky like this, okay? So we wanna know if it converges or not. So we're gonna use the ratio test. Okay, so our an plus one over an. Don't have to worry about the negative one to the n thing. Okay, so this is going to be two to the n plus one, n plus one factorial divided by five, eight, eleven. 3n plus 2. When I plug n plus 1 in there, I'm going to get 3n plus 5. Okay. And then divide by the 2 to the n, n factorial. And then the top here, I have the 5, the 8, the 11, the 3n plus 2. And we can say a whole shitload of stuff's going to cancel, right? So all of this stuff cancels with all of that stuff. And this will cancel with this. And this will cancel with this. So what we're left with is a 2 and then an n plus one in the top divided by a three n plus five, which is two n plus two, three n plus five. And as n tends to infinity, what's this limit? Two over three. Two over three. And all we needed to have was two over three to be less than one. So the above series, I don't want to write it again. Is absolutely convergent. Okay. All right. Now, occasionally we need this, a, a different type of, of a test. Okay. So this next one is what we call the root test. Now in all my history books that I have here at home, all the documentaries I've ever watched on any of these things, never seen who were the first people to come up with these ideas, the root test. Okay, so again, we have a series sum a n. Number one, if the limit as n tends to infinity of the magnitude of a n raised to the one over n is equal to L and that's less than one, then this series a sub n is absolutely convergent. All right. Number two, it's a similar, it's the same exact uh, conclusions. If you want, you can just write them down faster. If the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n of L and it's larger than one, then this thing diverges. And number three, if the limit as n tends to infinity of a n to the one over n is equal to one, no conclusion. Okay. 
Okay, now I, I, I proved the first, the, the ratio test. All right, so I'll just kind of sketch this one. And again, for those of you that are moving into higher math courses, you might want to, uh, you know, learn how to get through this. Okay, so number one, you know, if I have a n to the one over n going to l, then there exists a number. Well, first of all, there exists an r sitting in between l and one. Okay, so there exists an n bigger than zero such that if n is bigger than or equal to this n, then a sub n to the one over n is less than r. And so that's gonna mean that a sub n is gonna be less than r to the n. And this is for n bigger than or equal to n. Okay, so what we do is we start piling it up here. So a sub n, okay, that's gonna be smaller than r to the n, and then a sub n plus one, well, once again, that's gonna be less than a sub n times the r to the n plus one, and so on and so forth. And so then, and Eduardo, you know, you would want to probably dot all the i's and cross all the t's here, okay? So then I would say, all right, the sum, k equaling zero to infinity of a sub n plus k is smaller than this a sub n number times the sum k equaling zero to infinity of r to the capital N, and I mean N capital N plus k, okay? Now this is geometric. To find the sum, you would have to break this up into r to the N r to the k, factor that out and then deal with that sum. But anyways, and so converges, right? And then you say the sum of the absolute value of the ans is equal to the a zero all the way up to the a n minus one. And then it's the sum k equaling zero to infinity of a sub n plus k, which converges finite number of terms. So that means this series is absolutely convergent. All right, so the root test does not work well with factorials, obviously, but there are some things that it works well on. Um, seemed like when I was doing calculus, um, we used the ratio test more than anything else. But then when I was in the analysis courses and proving things, um, found that we use the root test more often. Anyways, if we go back to the same problem we did earlier, the sum n over two to the n, if I was to take the nth root of a sub n, that's gonna be the nth root of n over two to the first power. And as n tends to infinity, as I told you, you need to remember this stuff the nth root of n limit is one. All right, something for you to think about.
went straight on another one. For example, this one is like um, kind of blatant, okay? So the sum from one to infinity of one plus one over n to the n. Well, first of all, this is gonna diverge, okay? Even though we just got done discussing that this limit exists, okay? Now this is where it's the separation of ideas in your head. Some people look at the things being added up and recognize Eureka, I identify that as E. Okay, well, E is not zero, right? The only way that this could have a chance of converging is if the things you're adding up go to zero in the first place, right? And they're not. So then in the book, he has this problem where you now want to use the ratio test to the n squared. Okay, now again, this, this cannot converge, right? Just like, you know, put down your video game for a second and just think about this. All of these numbers are still bigger than one. They have no chance of going to zero, okay? The root test takes care of it. If you look at a n raised to the one over n power, what you're gonna get is one plus one over n to the nth power, which goes to e, which is bigger than one. So that means this guy diverges. All right. So I put one of, let me see. Yeah, I put, I put two problems on the test from this chapter. And, um, you know, they're just problems that are kind of either out in this book or some book. Whatever. Okay, so now let's look at a problem like this. The sum n equaling 47 to infinity of the square root of n divided by 1 plus n squared. This is a normal class, like throughout the semester. And about two weeks from now, if I put this problem on the board, you will have used the ratio and the root test so much that that's your knee-jerk reaction. Okay, now, I said they get used like 90% of the time. That doesn't mean they always are helpful. Sometimes they're not. If I look at a n plus one over a n, it's gonna be kind of a mess. One plus n plus one squared, and then times one plus n squared over the square root of n. Okay, so maybe there's hope for us here. If I kind of reorganize some things, I'll put n plus one over n all together in one happy family. And then here, I'll put n squared plus one. And down here, this is gonna be n squared plus two n plus two. Okay, so the ratio test seems to be getting us someplace. But unfortunately, when we take the limit as n tends to infinity of an plus one 
over a n. This is going to be a one times a one, which is one. So no conclusion. We're going to have to pick another test. All right. Okay, now there's a bunch of stuff that perhaps we should discuss here. Remember, all of our limit laws count. So one of the things that I used to get that one here, I mean, I didn't have every single one of you for calc one, but the square rooting function is a continuous function. So the result from calc one says limits pass directly through continuous functions, both in and out. Okay. And now you use your polynomial rule or your whatever, L'Hopital if you like, to get that. Okay, so these are just a handful of things. All right, so what would one do with this? Can we use Euler's rule in order uh, to solve for the, to find out whether it's divergent? Let's see, so n equals one to infinity square root of n. Now, if the ratio test didn't work, the root test is, I'm just looking at it, it's not going to work. Okay, but here's an observation to make. First of all, everything is positive here, right? But a n is less than the square root of n over n squared. If you make a denominator, if you make a denominator, um, bigger, the fraction gets smaller. And this is using our fraction rules, one over n to the three halves power, which we will call bn. So this one, we use the comparison test and the p test. So the sum of the bn's converges by the p test, where p is equal to three halves. So by the comparison test, the sum of the ans converges and is absolutely convergent. Okay, the only time you have to worry about convergence not being absolute is when there's negatives in there. Okay, now at some point in time in the future of some of you that are gonna be taking junior level math courses, maybe for electives, um, no, you never know. Um, at some point in time, it, we're gonna have to go through an argument of, okay, if you're absolutely convergent, then there, all of the rules and laws of arithmetic work, meaning there's none of that weird stuff that can happen like it happened yesterday with adding up a sum a different type of a way, okay? Um, professor? Yeah. Uh, why did you write sum of B and is convergent? How did you prove that it's convergent? Because we showed a couple days ago that one over N to the P converges when p is bigger than one, diverges for p less than or equal to one. We did this using the integral test. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So. I like the older versions of these books because there are more exercises in them. I'll just come up with a couple more here. Um, how about 
How about this guy? The sum of one over n to the one plus one over n. Didn't we already kind of talk about this one? Yeah. Okay, so what test did we use? The root test? No, we, we talked about this one uh, before we did the root test. So what we did is we integrated dx over, then it was, is that what I did? What did I do for that one? I forget. Okay, the limit comparison test is what it was. So um, the A and it was limit comparison test. I have something. Uh, it's showing me uh, something about epsilon. Yeah, the epsilon was a fixed number, and then I was showing you what happens if you let something go to zero. Okay, so now the BN is going to be one over N. The limit as N tends to infinity, then the rate in the uh, in the ratio test. Wait, what am I doing here? No, I'm here. Stop. What I was doing was this. So I'm going to compare these two guys. Okay, now is one of them smaller than the other one? Uh, yes. Yeah, remember that the n starts at one and goes to infinity. So when n is two, when the n is two, one over the n times n to the one over n, one over n, this number is gonna be bigger than one, okay? And so one over three times two, one over two times two, the bigger fraction is there, okay? So, Maybe we didn't handle this one. Maybe it was left. Was it left? I don't see it in my notes. You don't see it? Maybe I'm thinking about a different class. All right, so let's try to figure out how to do this one. Okay. By the way, there are no more tests. I mean, this is just, that's it, the ratio and the root test. Okay, so everything we have at our disposal, we should be able to figure this one out. I do the root test. Maybe that one might give us something. A n to the one over n. Okay, so it's going to be one divided by n to the one over n, n one over two n. Now we know that this thing goes to one. This probably goes to one too. So that's not really helping us. I try the limit comparison test because I think it's going to diverge. So I'll take the limit as n tends to infinity of a n over b n. Okay. And so that's going to be one over the nth root of n. Maybe you didn't see me cancel all of that. Okay, what's the limit as n tends to infinity of a n over b n? What is the limit as n tends to infinity of this? One. Right, okay. So it's inconclusive. Or is it? 
uh, we can still do the uh, the other. Attack. Hold on a second. When the limit was one, that was in inconclusive for the ratio test and the root test. Oh. This is the limit comparison test. Remember, all we needed this limit was to be some positive real number. Remember oh, that. And so that means that both these guys. Or in the foop, they diverge. Diverge. Nice. OK. OK, so ratio test and the root test. OK, now there's a kind of a interesting little result here. OK, now I forget where, what textbook I saw this in, but I'm taking us towards the Riemann hypothesis anyway. So, OK, so this discussion is about alternating series and the p-test. OK, now, um, this is kind of an interesting sleight of hand that's going to happen here, OK? But it's going to reveal something about alternating series. OK, so we're going we're gonna to let zeta, and this is the Greek letter zeta, of s be the following function. The sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. This is called the zeta function. OK. And as I've already told you, there is a a connection with this and the Euler product formula that has all of the primes in it. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let eta, and I think that's how we do eta of s, be the same series but alternating. Okay. All right. Now, from the integral test, if I was to look at zeta of one half, it's going to diverge. It's going to diverge for the p series. P one half less than one. And the alternating series test eta of one half, which is the sum n equaling one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one, divided by the square root of n, that thing converged. Not hard for an alternating series to converge. The terms just, the positive things just have to decrease down to zero. Okay. Okay. Now, I want us to note here that eta of one half is conditionally convergent because if you take the negative one thing away it's going to add up to infinity okay so again i'm going to do a trick like i did yesterday now I wanted to do it once yesterday and then save this for today because this is the kind of stuff that Riemann did. 
So if I write this thing out, one plus one over two to the S, one over three to the S, one over four to the S, one over five to the S, I'm gonna go out to 10, six to the S, seven to the S, nine and 10. Okay. So if I was This is all the positive things. And maybe I should have written that down. Okay, so eta of s equals one minus plus minus plus minus plus minus and plus minus, okay? Okay, so now here's where the, the, the thing kind of comes into play. Okay, so eta of s is equal to this um, this list one plus one over two to the s plus one over three to the s plus one over four to the s five to the s six to the s seven to the s, eight to the s, s, one over nine to the s, one over 10 to the s. Okay, now if this term has to be minus, so underneath this, I'm gonna put minus, okay, now this is gonna be two over two to the s. So when I take this term here and I subtract this term here, I'm gonna get that term, okay? And then I go over to the four to the S go guy and I subtract over two over four to the S. And then I go over to the six and I subtract up two over six to the S subtract two over eight to the S, subtract two over 10 to the S, I mean, plus, 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 there's the whole minus sign is out there, plus. And so what we end up getting is this term rearranged, okay? This is a, rearrangement. Now, it's kind of a, it's not just the kind we did yesterday where every third or fourth one we plugged in something. This is like an infinite list chopped in half and then, or and then flipped around. Okay. Now, the piece that we've got here so this eta of s, well, to me, that looks like the zeta function of s minus the two. And then if I kind of pull two over two to the s out from an, well, let me, let me not do this like that. That's a bad, that's a bad way to do that. Okay, so if I, first of all, 
take out a two, okay? Then I'm gonna have a one over two to the S plus one over four to the S plus one over six to the S plus one over eight to the S plus one over 10 to the S. Okay, keep going like that. And then I'm gonna factor out a two to the S from the denominator. So that's gonna be zeta of S minus two over two to the S times the following sum, one plus one over um, two to the S, one over three to the S, one over four to the S, see what's happening here? Five to the S, okay. And so this is going to equal this guy minus one over two to the S minus one times that thing again. But that thing is that guy. Okay, so in this functional equation that we have here, this eta of S is equal to one minus one over two to the S minus one times the zeta function. Okay. All right, now I want you to remember what eta was. Eta of S is the, uh, where's my eta guy? Is this alternating series. N equaling one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one over n to the s um wait a second i got this piece wrong um no i have that right whoops I had that right. Okay. And it's been a while since we've looked at this. And, go, and so this guy is equal to this guy. Okay. And equaling one to infinity, one over n to the s. Okay. Now, if you take this equation and you flip it over, the Zeta of S is going to be, by a common denominator, that fraction, it's going to be 2 to the S minus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the S minus 1 times Zeta or Eta of S. Okay, so that's how. I flip that over. Okay. So it comes up to negative one. What I did is I, I so I common denominator this mm -hmm. two to the s minus one minus one over two to the s minus one, and then I want to solve for this guy, so I flip it over and get this guy. Uh -oh. Okay. Now here's where the weird thing happens. Okay. Zeta of one half is looking like two to the negative one half minus one over two to the negative one half eta of s. I mean, eta of one half.
And so this is the number one over radical two minus one over one over radical two times this thing. Multiply top and bottom by radical two, you're gonna get uh, one minus radical two times one eta of one half. Okay, so this thing, which is this series, one over the square root of n, which diverged before. According to this, it's one minus radical two times this eta of one half, and that thing converged. So we're left with a, a bit of a conundrum here, okay? The integral test is pretty damn solid, okay? Yet this is happening. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that Riemann did. He wanted to extend the domain of definition of his zeta function. So what he did is he took the zeta function and he extends the domain of definition to where S is now a complex number, okay? And he gets it to converge everywhere in the complex plane except when S is equal to one, which is the harmonic series. Okay, now what he's doing here is something, you know, like changing the domain of definition of the function. Now you're gonna see the connection shortly, okay? All right, so in the section 11, Point six, you know, he's got like 45 of these problems to do. In section 11.7, which is where I get most of the test questions, anything goes. So on your next exam, which will be pretty much primarily the rest of this chapter, I will put maybe a few of these problems on maybe one or two, okay? Because the important, the important stuff is to come. Yes. Hey, Bobby, will we, uh, will we have that next test like early next week or cause, cause I know we still have two more, so. Yeah, so the test, I told you guys, I'm gonna put the test up. You know, this one. There. Yeah. Yeah, so but I'm talking right. about the next test because we essentially have to have one every week unless you want to do two. Um, are we having that early next week or? Well, I'm treating, I'm treating test five as I always do. Oh, uh, you mean the final you're gonna treat like just the same week as test five? Okay. No, no, no. Remember the fifth test is the take home test. Yeah, okay, I got you. Okay, so this test for the power series. Yeah which we're going to next. Okay, so this will be, let me open the door for the dog, hold on. This test will be um, your fourth one. And if we were, if this was the normal semester, I wouldn't have done the test like this, or maybe I would have, I don't know. But what I do is, I always try to have, like in the regular semester, mm -hmm. I always try to have this chapter 11 test um, kind of on the last day of like the Thursday or the Wednesday of week 15. 
and then you take the take home test with you. Oh, so this test is going to be like back to back, like with the other one, essentially. Yeah. So this one, I'll put it and then I'll put the other one up, up there. So oh. basically you'll have a double test. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So yeah. Anyway, that's how this is going to go. All right. Just curious. Thanks. Okay. So um, I want to kind of end a little bit earlier tonight because I don't want to go too far away. So and over the weekend, you're, I'm going to have to redo this anyway. Um, so that's the anything goes chapter. Okay, so 11.8. Now, this is where we've wanted to be getting at all along. Power series. Okay, so what we saw last time was that the natural log of two was equal to some kind of a sum, zero to infinity, negative one to the n plus one divided by n, okay? Now maybe there was some kind of an x that I put in here that produced the two, you know what I mean? Like for example, Um, some of the problems that they ask you to do, even in the previous sections, they ask you for what values of X does this series converge? So I'm sure if I look hard enough in the exercises, I can find it. So they've already sneak in a power series on you without you knowing it, okay? Now, before we uh, answer this question, um, what we'll do is, we'll, before we go back to the definition of power series, let's just look at the solution to this. If I use the ratio test, a n plus one over a n, I'm gonna get the absolute value of x to the n plus one divided by n plus one factorial times n factorial over x to the n. That to me looks like the absolute value of X over N plus one. And so the limit as N tends to infinity of a N plus one over a N is equal to the limit as N tends to infinity, the absolute value of X N plus one now this limit has nothing to do with X, so it can be factored out by the limit laws, one over N plus one, which is equal to the absolute value of X times zero, which is zero, which is less than one. Okay, so the answer is by the ratio test, this series x to the n over n factorial converges for all x. Okay, so if we wanted to kind of generalize this kind of idea, um, we'll define it, definition. A power series which we'll call, which has a center at A is a series of the form
and it's a sum, and it's going to be c sub n times x minus a to the n. Okay, and the n might start at zero. Sometimes it starts at one. Okay, and so if a is equal to zero, then we would have a series that looks like this c sub n x to the n. Okay. All right. So if we start looking at examples of these things, we can ask questions like, for example, for this series, sum n equaling 27 to infinity. And let's say it's going to be x minus 1 to the n divided by 2n, let's say. Uh, for this series, what values of x does this converge for? Okay, so the solution here can use the ratio test and plus one. I only use the root test when it's just very convenient. Tracking the n root of two around, I don't want to do that. So this is going to be um, x minus one, n plus one, divided by two times n plus one, two n over x minus one to the n. Twos are going to cancel to give me this x minus one times the n over n plus one. Okay, now this time, the limit as n tends to infinity of a n plus one over a n is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of this thing times this. Okay, now just as before, x minus one has no dependence on n, so I can bring him out. Limit as n tends to infinity, n over n plus one. Okay. Now this limit is one. So therefore the limit is x minus one. Okay, now the conclusion of the ratio test says that if this L is less than one, it converges. So what we do is we force this X minus one to be less than one. And then you just undo the absolute value inequality, add one everywhere and you get zero less than X less than two. Okay, now we're not done. Because if the limit equals one, there's no conclusion. Okay, so what we have to do is figure out when this limit equals one. Well, if, if X is equal to zero, then what happens way the hell back up here? If X is equal to two, what happens way the hell up there? Because when X is two or when X is zero, this limit is exactly one, okay? So we have to plug in the end pieces. So you always have to manually, is there two L's in manually? No, check 
the endpoints. Okay, so x equals zero. Now you have to plug it into the original series. The original series is x minus one to the n over two n. You plug that in, I get negative one to the n when x equals zero over the two n. So this is converging, alternating series test. Okay. When x is equal to two, I'm gonna get the sum of one to the n over two n. That's the sum of one over two n. That's the diverging harmonic type series. Okay, so the interval of convergence then is this piece and that piece. Okay. Take a quick little five minute break because I'm sitting so long I need to powder my nose. Be right back. <laughs> Not to explode. Okay. Everybody good with uh, all that stuff I've been typing? So you guys understand we have to take test one, two, three, four, and five. You will not know what your grade is from test five going into the final. You will not know what your grade is from test five on the last day of class. The final is optional. It's not extra credit. Um, it normally replaces two of your lowest graded tests. So if you got an 85 on test one and test two, and then you get a 90 on the final, it will replace test one and test two. Um, but it is not extra credit. So if you get two points on the final, it's not those two points don't help you. However, he in the past, he has said that if you have an 89% in the class and you take the final, he will bump you up potentially to like an A. But if you have an 89% in the class and you don't take the final, you keep the B. Sorry, I just want to say it again, just in case anything I typed didn't make sense. Test five, I have no clue, but it's going to be a long take home one, um, Reza. So I wouldn't worry about it. And it's going to be the, uh, it sounds like it's going to be given the same time as test four. Um, yeah, the final sucks. Just so you guys know, the final was extremely difficult in Calc 1 and pre-Calc. Um, I, I don't know what it is for this, but. Ah, uh, it's different times. What? It's different times. You guys have books and internet and each other. It still was hard in Calc 1, man. We had oh, yeah. books in the internet and each other and all that stuff. Don't you remember we were doing Zoom? <laughs> uh, but pre-calc, yeah, it was pre-calc is still difficult. Yeah, my, that final was tricky. <laughs> but everybody was asking, I was trying to explain, is it going to be the same way it's always is? No, it's not extra credit. It can replace grades for the lowest. Yeah, same. It's the same exact. Perfect. All right. I, I can learn that you, all that stuff. Cool. Okay, now. If I had a series like this, for example, just to refresh your memory, we found that this guy converged for all real numbers, this interval. If I do this example, like n equaling zero to n, about one to infinity, um, of n to the n, x to the n. If I do the root test on this guy, that's going to be n x. And so the limit as n tends to infinity of this thing is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of this, which is this which can be only one of two things, zero 
less than one. If X equals zero, infinity, which is bigger than one, if X doesn't equal zero. So the conclusion is that this series, N equaling one to the infinity of N to the N, X to the N, converges at X equals zero only. Now, if you think about it, and for a general series like this, C sub n, x minus a to the n, it'll always converge when x equals a, right? Because you're just adding up a bunch of zeros, okay? The question here is, is there going to be kind of a series that we find that does something different than one of these three results? Like, am I going to be able to find a series that looks like this, where it converges in this region and in this region, but nowhere else? Okay, well, the answer is going to be no. All right. And so this is all put up in a result for us. Okay. Okay, so he calls it a theorem. Not really much of a theorem. Okay, so for any power series, sum C and x minus a to the n exactly one of the below is true. Number one, it converges at x equals a only. Number two, it converges for all x and as real numbers. Three, there exists a number r bigger than zero such that it converges for x minus a less than r diverges for x minus a larger than r. Okay, so what this result is telling us here is that um, we're not going to find some weird thing where you're going to have two separate inter intervals. Okay, now for most of you in the room right now, you guys can go ahead and log off. I'm going to, um, cause this stuff is, this is just the proof of this statement and only a handful of people need it. So I won't be doing anything new. As soon as I log off of here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do your, you know, your test. Okay. So this is just for that. Anybody that wants to see this proof and this is as far as we're going to go. Okay. And then of course we will talk about this result again on Monday anyway. All right. So in order to do this, um, we're, we're gonna prove like a couple results, okay? So I'm gonna call this thing a lemma. So a lemma is just kind of a helpful little result on the side, okay? So my lemma states that if this thing converges, for 
uh, x equals b, then it converges for all x such that the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of b. And if, I guess I could call this a second lemma, if cn x to the n diverges um, for x equal to d, then it diverges for all x where the magnitude of x is larger than the magnitude of d. This used to not be in the book. And since I haven't opened up a new version of Stuart in years, I just give them to my kids or students that come in that seem like they're down on their luck and boy, a free calculus book would hit the spot. So anyway, I don't know, maybe he's put it in there now. So this, I, you know, I kind of drag this up. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's, let's do like the first statement. Like, let's suppose that it converges at B, okay? These, these results actually aren't that hard to, to prove. Suppose that this thing, CN, X to the N, converges for X equals B. Okay, so what this means is that CN, B, to the n converges. All right. Well, if that converges, then by the criterion for convergence, the limit as n tends to infinity of the things that we're adding up have to go to zero. Well, if they're going to zero, that would mean at some point in time, when n is big enough, um, the magnitude of c n times b to the n is going to be less than one. Okay, well, if I go back to cn x to the n, and I do this in absolute value, and I'm going to write this as cn x to the n times b to the n over b to the n, Right, just multiply by one. Okay. Now this is going to be switched into c to the n, b to the n times x over b to the n. Okay, now if n is larger than this n, this thing, which ended up being this thing, the c n b to the n thing is less than one. So this is just going to be less than x over b to the n. Okay, now the sum of x over b to the n is geometric.
and it converges provided that the thing that you're adding up is less than one or that is less than one i.e x less than b okay and so the sum of the cn um, x to the n thing converges for all x such that absolute value of x is less than absolute value of b. Okay, now I'm going to prove the second one. For the second part, we could do a similar thing and get it ahead of a diverging geometric series. Could do that if we wanted to. But I'm going to do a little mathematical sleight of hand. Okay. So suppose that the sum Cn x to the n diverges for x equals d. That means that this sum d to the n diverges. Okay. So we're so that means that this is a this is a diverging sum. Now, if x is bigger than this number d, and c, the sum, c to the n, x to the n, converged, then by part one of what we were talking about, since it converges at x, it converges for all numbers d that are less than x contradicting that this sum diverges. Okay, so the conclusion that this sum cn x to the n diverges when the x is bigger than the d. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to prove the result. So we're gonna prove the result of uh, the above result with a catch with a equal to zero, i.e. what we're gonna do, um, well, we could, we could, we could do do it with u equals x minus a, but that's that'll be the last step. Okay, so the way that, that this works is 
you start looking at, okay, what is it that needs to be proven here? Like, like, for example, can you, can you be con convergent for all X and at X equals zero only? No, you can't be, right? Okay. So you go through like two of them at a time being false. Okay. So if like the first one and the third one are false, meaning there is no interval that has this magic thing and it converts, converges at X equals zero or X equals A only, um, that's false. You must conclude that it's got to converge for all X, okay? So we're gonna write these down again. This time though, I'm gonna suppress the thing. Okay, so this is the sum C N X to the N converge at X equals zero only to converge for all X in R. Three, there exists an R such that you converge for X less than R, diverge for X bigger than R. Okay, now, by the way, notice in the result, nowhere does it say anything about equaling R. So that's the, the endpoints thing that we got to do. Okay. So I'm going to suppose one and two are false. Okay. Okay. So this means there exists a number B that's a real number such that this thing CN X to the N converges at X equals B. Okay. There exists a B. Erase that not equal to zero as that happens, okay? So that's the first statement being uh, not true, okay? And converging for all X and R, well, that's false. So there exists a number D uh, such that the series CN X to the N diverges at X equals D. Okay, now the proof of this result for those of you who are still here takes a very interesting twist. Okay, so I'm making it sound like it's, you know, end game or something. It's not. Okay, so let's let S be the set of all X that are real numbers such that this thing CN X to the N converges. Okay. Now S is not the empty set since zero is in S. Okay. So because S is not empty, I can pick things out of it. So let's pick S's nose. So let's pick something out of S. So pick some X sitting in S. All right. Now, by our lemma if the magnitude of x 
is bigger than the magnitude of this number D right here, which it diverges for. Um, then the sum C n x to the n diverges, right? But x is in that. So since x is in s and x bigger than d is false, we must have that the absolute value of x is less than the absolute value of this guy d. Okay, so we can conclude here that if x is in s, you can be damn sure that x is smaller than that number, the absolute value of d. No doubt about it, okay? All right, well, this says that if X is in S, X is less than B for some B. So the set S is bounded above. Well, we appealed to this before by the completeness axiom. Completeness axiom, the least upper bound of the set S exists. Okay, so this is where the R comes from. Call it R. Okay, and since R is the least upper bound, of the set S, if X is in S, then we know X is less than R, right? And if the number X is larger than R, X will not be in S. Okay, now this last little thing right here, who keeps changing my, switch clickers on me. Fucking with my TV. Okay, so the thing that this is with one of these logic steps. If the statement P then the statement Q. This is P implies Q. Okay, so the statement P is X is in S. The statement Q is X is less than R. Okay, so this is logically equivalent to if not Q, then not P. So this is not Q implies not P. Okay, so we got the R, which is the radius of convergence as the least upper bound. And we know that if X is in S, X must be less than R. 
And if X is bigger than R, X is not an S. So we conclude that number three holds, okay? And the proof finished besides now write the series like this and let u equal x minus a and then that's the thing that you push through okay so i wanted to make sure can, can you i forgot i forgot to write the u oh go back and u equals i gotta go back to this share hold on U is just X minus A. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, so these are the uh, power series things. All right. So this is where we want it to be. Now, what we're going to do with these things, let me see. Let's show that 29 people in here. Yeah, in the chat, there's any, not sure, test five. Okay, we already talked a bunch about tests. Um, so what we're going to do going forward for like next week is just a lot of this stuff. We're going to try to do all of the cheap and dirty stuff, get it out of the way. And we're, if you want to like, like read ahead, we're just going to be taking the geometric series and just working the crap out of it, okay? Yeah. And then when we can't do that anymore, and then we're gonna have to start doing calculus stuff to figure these problems out. So, um, I, like I said, as soon as I, as soon as I hang up here, I'm gonna post your 10 question test. I think that's the wrong clicker. I know it's worth whatever you're doing in there is doing it to this TV. Because our idiot kids just do stupid shit like that. Yeah, you had to bring it back. You Switch. bring, yeah. Okay. Terrible kids. So, my best friend from high school showed up yesterday after class. He's okay. out here. He's out here. Uh, he lives in Florida. Hmm. And, uh, he had to come out to deal with his mom and stuff like that. And yeah, the two of us pretty much drank the better part of a 36 pack at Miller Lite. You don't feel sick today? No, I never get hungover. Oh man, you're lucky. That's why that's the main reason why I don't drink very much ever. I don't okay, like figure it. out who's using quicker. I uh, I got a balance, so it's my sister's birthday and I gotta do that test, but I'm down. <laughs> yeah, at least have a good time, man. Chilling with your buddy. Oh yeah, it was great, man. We laughed, and yeah, this has been my best friend since sixth grade. So you know, it's kind of fun. Hey, good hang out. All right, let me let me uh, hang up here so I can uh, post your test. All right. Hey, Bobby. All right. See you guys. Have a good weekend.